Good day, everybody. My name is Jack Parker, and I'm your superintendent. I'm providing an update today on several things that are going through a lot of our minds. But before I get started with that, I just want to tell all of you how proud I am of how hard you are working with your children, with your teachers, to help this experience be the best that it possibly can for them during this uh, pandemic. So thank you so much for that. Um, and also a big celebration for all the great support that's being provided to our community, our teachers, our administrators, our counselors are working tirelessly to help support students and families and one another, as well as our food service department who has served thousands and thousands of meals to students every week, and our technology department who's making sure the machine still is running and providing extra devices when they get broken or when a power cord gets chewed on by a dog, um, and even providing extra Wi-Fi access points in our parking lots for those people that need it. So I just can't tell you how it, I admire all the people, both in our community and in our schools who have really stepped up um, to help this go as smoothly as possible. Um, I want to give you an update on commencement. Mr. Dodd has been working with the seniors and their parents. He held, I think, seven virtual meetings to talk to te teacher, excuse me, to students to see what they thought was best for their graduation. Did a couple of series of surveys, um, collecting a survey this week. He'll probably announce later this week what the students decided because it's their commencement ceremony. Um, so that will come out pretty soon. So great job, Mr. Dodd and the high school team for really um, seeking the voices and um, desires of our students and our seniors. Um, our seniors, I am so sorry that this uh, 13 years has ended this way for you. You've missed so many wonderful opportunities. Um, and I know that you're working really hard and transitioning to the next stage of your life. And I challenge you, I challenge you to have the absolute best reunions of any graduating class ever. Come back next year for homecoming. Um, organize for your five, 10, 15 year reunions and visit with one another. You're a great group of students and we will miss you. And um, our hearts go out to you for some of the experiences that you've lost as your culminating year in 13 years um, comes to an end. But congratulations on all of your great work. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the summer. Um, Governor Holcomb said just last Friday that schools are closed through the summer. That's June, through June. And what's that going to look like for us for summer? Well, we know we're going to have to get students in the school to get some of the personal effects, and we also have to get some library books returned um, and some seniors turning in their Chromebooks and things like that. We're developing plans for that. It's likely going to happen in July unless the governor changes and allows us to do some of this in June. We don't know. Um, summer school is probably going to be more virtual than ever. Uh, we do have elementary and middle school summer school that we could do in July if we're allowed to do that. We may be able to bring students in to do our normal summer school ramp up in July. So all of those plans, we are thinking of everything and we will let you know as soon as we possibly can. I also want to share next school year. What are we thinking about next school year? I want you to know we're thinking everything about next school year. The governor said last Friday that he won't tell us about starting next school year until July. Um, what does that mean? Well, that means we just have to be prepared um, for when he does make the decision if schools will be open or not and what that may look like and what restrictions will be put on us. We need to plan and prepare for that. So we're already planning and preparing to sterilize our heart surfaces as much as possible throughout the day and certainly at the end of every day. We're developing plans and schedules that'll keep students more separated during the school day. And, and maybe even students will be wearing masks on the bus. We don't know. We're working for all those kind of ideas and plans that we will get out to you as soon as we get those made. So, you know, the other part is we are really focusing on bringing students back to our buildings when the next school year starts. And we don't know if we'll be able to do that right at the beginning of August. So we're developing some calendar contingencies and, and maybe we push that back and, and make the school year a little um, smaller this way. Um, we're having those conversations and we'll be taking ideas to the board at the next board meeting in May. Uh, about some calendar ideas that we could pull out of our back pocket if we need to use them in, in, this, in the summer. And we will communicate with you ahead of time what those possible contingencies might be. Um, but we are absolutely looking at that. 
Um, but we also recognize that without a vaccine and with not enough immunity, there's a distinct possibility that schools will have to be closed for a time again this fall or maybe even this winter. We don't know. What we do know is we need to be prepared for it. And we are working with our teachers to provide brand new professional development just focused on building the best e-learning um, lessons possible. And our teachers are the best. We are very lucky and more fortunate than most districts because our folks have been doing e-learning for a long time and we're one-to-one. -one. And so many districts really still aren't one-to-one -one yet with devices. So I'm really proud of the work that we've been doing, uh, but we really need to continue to ramp up our capacity to provide even better e-learning instruction to our students. So the month of May and summer, we're using a lot of our grant money to support our teachers, to give them the time to learn and to even do better and collaborate even more to build the best possible learning experiences that can be blended, that can be used in class live and online for those who can't um, participate in school live and in person. So we are doing everything we possibly can to make the next school year the best it possibly can be for all of our students and our families. I'm gonna share one other thing. Um, we are hosting a virtual town hall meeting. I have a couple of them, they're traveling talks. Um, I've been doing them um, since I came here a couple of years ago and they've been very successful. And I very much enjoyed the conversation. We have two virtual traveling talks coming up and they're posted on our website. If you wanna to talk to me about anything, you have any thoughts, you have any questions, you just wanna hear what other people are talking about and you just wanna sit and listen, that's fine as well. We can hold um, tens of people in one of those meetings. And I would encourage you to visit our website frequently. The virtual traveling talk links will be there and the dates will be there, as well as frequently asked questions about our e-learning and our COVID closures and all the procedures that we're doing uh, to keep everybody safe and comfortable and ment mentally healthy. So hang in there, guys. We're doing great job. You guys are amazing. We appreciate all of your work and all the support and everybody coming together to make this the best possible experience for our students and our families. Again, I hope to see you at the virtual traveling talks. And until then, take care and have a great day.